This is section 4.3, part 3, and today we're talking about angles and radian measures still. We're going to focus today on arc length and also the linear and angular speed to describe motion around a circle. So the first objective, objective 7, the length of a circular arc. Now, we learned when we were talking about radians and what a radian is, that in order to determine the angle in terms of radians, we would take our arc length, and we'll call that S, and divide it by how many radiuses it takes. And remember, that gave us our angle in radians. Now, right now, I want to solve for S. I want a formula for arc length. So if I multiply both sides by the radius, you can see that S, the arc length, is going to be the radius times the angle. Now, a few things to keep in mind. The first will be that the angle needs to be in radians. And the other thing to remember is that R stands for radius. And finally, the S is the arc length. So to determine the length of an arc, we're going to take the radius times the angle in radians, and that would give us the length of the arc. So here's our example. A radius, a circle has a radius of 7 inches. We're going to find the length of the arc with an angle of 120 degrees. Now, the first thing to remember is that 120 degrees, that's degrees, we said our angle had to be in radians. So the first step here is going to take our 120 degrees and we're going to have to switch it into radians. Remember to do that, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. And when I do a little bit of simplifying here, we'll drop the zeros and divide by 6. We get 2 thirds. So our angle in terms of radians is 2 pi over 3. Remember, that's our theta, that's our angle. Now, to find our arc length, we're going to take our theta times the radius, that's the formula we just learned. So we'll say 2 pi over 3 times 7 inches, and we get 14 pi over 3 inches. Now, in terms of the real world and word problems, 14 pi over 3 inches doesn't mean a lot to me. So this is one case where we probably would want to multiply 14 pi and divide it by 3 to get about 14.66 inches. So that would be the length of that arc. And again, either answer is acceptable. They mean the same thing. Let's go ahead and do another example. Why don't you pause your video and try this one on your own? So hopefully you switched your angle to radians first and got 5 pi over 6. And then when you multiplied that by 5, the radius, we got 25 pi over 6, which is 13.09. All right, right now I want you to try this multiple choice question. This is going to go into your Google form for the night. And then after that, we'll go on to the next objective. So the next objective is talking about linear and angular speed. Now I have some formal definitions listed here from your book. But let's go ahead actually and let's take a look um, at just what those words mean first before we talk about the actual formulas. The first thing I want to talk about is angular speed. Now, angular speed is how fast something is rotating. So, for example, angular speed is going to be determined by revolutions. And it, it'll often say revolutions per minute or per second or per uh, hour. So it's talking about how fast it's, it's going around a circle, how fast it's rotating. The difference between that and linear speed is that linear speed is just how fast it's moving in a linear fashion. And it could be around the circle, but it's just how fast it's moving. So this is going to be in, for example, feet per time or um, inches per time, so feet per minute or 
meters per minute. So it's talking about how fast it's moving more in a linear fashion, where angular speed is talking about how fast something is rotating. Now, for sake of our formulas here, in order to determine angular speed, let's go back and look now at the previous slide. Our angular speed, it looks like a W here, is going to be our theta divided by time. Now theta has to be in radians. So it's going to be our angle in radians over time. And that's going to be our angular speed. Now, to think about the linear speed, it's going to be that angular speed times the radius. And you can see that formula there. So if we take our angular speed times the radius, we're going to get our linear speed. Now, the reason for that if we go way back up here to the top, is that another definition for linear speed is arc length over time. Arc length divided by time. So how long is your arc divided by how long does it take? Now we know that arc length, we just determined arc length to be our angle times our radius. If we take our angle times our radius and we divide it by time, we know that angle divided by time is angular speed. So hopefully you can see where we get the fact that it's angular speed times radius, and that's for linear speed. So again, the angular speed is going to be the angle in radians over time. The linear speed is going to be that angular speed times the length of the radius. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example now. A windmill in Holland is used to generate electricity. Its blades are 12 feet in length, and we've seen windmills before. We have a lot of those windmill kind of areas here. So 12 feet in length is the length of a blade, and they, re they rotate at eight revolutions per minute. So in one minute, that blade goes around eight times. And I want the linear speed in terms of feet per minute. Now the first thing that's really nice here is that everything is in the same units. Our blades are in feet, our revolutions are minute, and we want our answer in feet per minute. So we don't have to worry about doing any time converting here. Remember we just determined that linear speed is the angular speed times the radius. The nice thing is that we have our radius, our 12 feet. The problem here is that we don't have our angular speed in terms of radians. We have our angular speed just as eight revolutions per minute. If I want to think about that, what that means in terms of radians, eight revolutions per minute and one revolution is two pi radians. So that means we're going 16 revolutions Per minute. Six, I'm sorry, 16 pi revolutions per minute in terms of radians. So we'll put that 16 pi in for our angular speed. And now when I multiply 16 pi times 12 pi, we get a total of 192 pi revolutions per minute. Um, and I'm sorry, it's 192 pi feet per minute, not revolutions per minute. So it's going 192 pi feet per minute. Now in terms of a real world situation, 192 pi doesn't mean much to me. So if I multiply those together, we get 603.2 feet per minute. And that's how fast that blade is traveling, the end of the blade. 
All right, right now I have a free response question for you. It's about a carousel. It says if a carousel is rotating at 2.5 revolutions per minute, I want to know how to find the linear speed of a child seated on one of the animals. So in this case, you're going to just describe to me how to find the linear speed. You won't actually be able to calculate it. You don't have all the information. And that's where we'll end for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow.